hi my friends in this video we are going to examine for loops let's get started without wasting any time first of all let's start with the definition of loop as usual a for loop is used for iterating over a sequence that is either a list a tuple a dictionary a set or a string let's suppose we have a list which contains students if we want to print the students from the list it will be ridiculous to use print function for each index. I will quickly create a list so you will better understand with an example. So let's say students. We have random names here. Actually, I will change the variable name. Let's say athletes. Okay, let's say there are hundreds or even thousands of names, and if you want to print them, what we are gonna do of course we are not going to do like that let's see, we are we are not going to something like that if you want to print it in this way of course i can print it no problem but what if we had thousands of names in this list so we can do it like that. So I delete it. That is where the loops come into play. First, we write for, and then we specify a variable name. So we, we are going to use the, the variable name to access the items one by one. So let's say, I don't know, a person. And then we write the in keyword. As the last step, we specify the data whose items we want to get one by one. In our case, it is athletes. So let's say athletes. And uh, we put a colon just with it with if statement. Actually, the loop is ready. By the person variable, we will be able to access the items in this list, in this list one by one. By the way, the name of this variable can be anything. There is no limit for it. Okay, if we go back to our subject now, you can do anything you want with the items of this list. As a classic example, we are going to print it. So let's say person. If I run it, look, I was able to print the names in order. Of course, we won't use them for just printing. Loops are very useful when we want to do batch operations. For example, I want to generate an email address from the names here. How can I do it? I think it is going to be good uh, practice to understand loops. But before going on, let's find out what type of the person is. So let's write it type person if I run it so it's a string we learn some string methods like the replace method converting uppercase letters to lowercase and the etc you know that it's time to use them now first of all let's convert all our names to lowercase so we can do it with lower methods we just need to write lower here since it is a string, I can use lower method. You may wonder why I convert them to lower case. You know, uh, email with capital letters is not widely accepted. That's why I want to convert uh, the names to, to uh, lower case. If I run it, okay, check the terminal. All the names are lower case. And now it's time to get right off this space here. To remove the space, I will use replace method. I want to replace the gap with nothing. If you haven't watched the string methods video, I highly recommend you to watch it because we learned all the things in that video. But just to remind you, the first parameter here is the character that we are aiming to change. In our scenario, it is space. 
and the, the second parameter is what we want to replace them with so we want to replace it with nothing that's why I didn't add anything here so if I run it look both spaces have disappeared and the, all the characters have been lowercase so I can easily write an extension for email I mean I can just write something at hotmail.com and uh, if I run it I have emails I generated emails I think it was a good example for us to, to understand loops you can use loops on all iterable data list tuples dictionaries and strings I wrote the name of a Turkish sportsman here so if I use loop with string by the way you can give any name actually for that variable like I or you can just write character in example str if I printed the character let's run it look I accessed all the characters of the string one by one we can also loop sets let's take a quick look at it I will delete it so let's say example set and then I will write some colors and then I'm going to write a loop here just say color I just want to give a name related to the to the item so that's why I use color here let's say example set and I want to print color one by one okay that works we can also use loops with dictionaries but it is a bit more complicated if you have watched the video on dictionaries you will understand without any problem so let me show you I will create a, a dictionary quickly okay let's write a loop for it this is an example date if I leave it like that I can only access keys so let's see I just got the keys here we need to remember the way we access the values with the with the key here so we just need to write dictionary and the inside the brackets we just write the key whose values we want to access so let's write name if I run it so I'm not going to use loop for now okay we got mic so if we do it like that I don't know how to remove the, the comments here because I don't use PyCharm actually so if you want to access the values we can use the same logic as we did here we can write example date and then we put brackets so we get keys one by one with that variable if I give this variable into brackets and then I will remove it if I run it I got the values here but if our target was only to access values we could do it with the values method in dictionaries so let's see the methods you will remember we just need to write values here and we don't need to write anything we just write i here okay we got the values again if you want to access both the key and the value pairs we can use the items method so if I change it from uh, values to items and then I run it check the terminal it's returned our dictionary as a tuple in the form of key value since this tuple has two values we can also separate the values if we specify variables that will correspond to tuple values we can assign the 
tuple values to variables. So for example, if I write it like that, I'm just saying key value. You can give any name. I just want some related names. And then if I run it like that, key value, let's run it. Look, as you can see, I have assigned the values to variables. It may confuse you a little bit, but I want to remind you one more time. If I delete it, I mean, if I give a just single variable here, here and then run it, this variable represents the tuple itself. This tuple has two values here. But if I add one more variable next to it, I just write value. You can write anything. It doesn't matter. The, if I run it again, look, I just printed the key here because the first values of tuple, because the first value of tuple does key. So the key of dictionary has assigned to this variable. So if I write value here, and the value of this dictionary has assigned to this variable. If you didn't understand what I said, it is quite normal. You just learn Python and you will be get familiar with these kind of things.